So hi, uh, uh, welcome. Uh, uh, I'm Manohara SR from uh, Award Solutions, uh, facilitating this uh, webinar on uh, uh, service-based architecture, that is SBA in 5G. So let's uh, quickly start with uh, uh, introduction, and then uh, we will go through with the uh, uh, with the call. Okay. So uh, right with the class. Okay. So uh, about me again, uh, welcome. Uh, my, my name is uh, Manohara Essa from uh, Award Solutions. I have about 19 plus years of experience in uh, wireless uh, industry. Uh, so I, my instructional focus is on 4G, 5G as of now uh, on both uh, radio and core networks. So this is about uh, myself and uh, Right, quickly about uh, award solutions. Uh, uh, we have uh, a total of uh, 255 plus companies, both uh, wireless and cable, as our uh, as our uh, clients. Uh, uh, right, so uh, they range from chip uh, chipset vendors to network or uh, network vendors to the tool vendors to the service providers and also the application providers. We do have uh, uh, we do have the partnerships uh, with uh, Mobile World Congress, uh, both uh, Barcelona as well as Los Angeles. And uh, Award Solutions is rated among one of the best companies to work in, uh, uh, in the state of uh, Texas uh, for the year 2019. So about our uh, uh, skill sets, knowledge, uh, knowledge uh, we have about 101k plus uh, students trained in LTG. About 17.58k uh, uh, students uh, trained in 5G, about 25k plus uh, uh, students trained in uh, cloud virtualization, uh, OpenStack, uh, those, uh, those kind of courses, and about uh, 2.3k plus uh, students uh, trained in uh, uh, data. So those who have taken our courses have highly recommended, uh, typically 98% of them have uh, recommended the, uh, the courses for uh, uh, their uh, peers or uh, colleagues. So they are basically, our courses are uh, uh, right, role oriented, depending upon uh, uh, what the uh, roles of uh, engineers are there in the industry. And it is available in both on demand as well as uh, or live uh, uh, live sessions, and then uh, these are the KPI impacting. Okay, and uh, to stay uh, connected with us, uh, to be informed about our offerings uh, from award solutions, uh, you can use the QR codes. Uh, the first one is being for the award solutions, and uh, you can also uh, follow up me on the LinkedIn uh, using this QR code. And in turn, I will be uh, forwarding uh, uh, the uh, offers uh, from award solutions uh, for those uh, who are interested in our courses uh, and uh, for uh, some of to, you, you can use uh, this QR code uh, right with the coupon code as a webinar and you can get uh, a while a 20% discount on our tech primers uh, and self-paced uh, e-learning courses uh, so this is uh, right so this is valid up until about 24th of uh, uh, this, this month, uh, September 24th, uh, so you can avoid the benefits. About our offerings in uh, various uh, courses, like example, the 5G virtualization, automation, and analysis, uh, we do have foundation courses, which are basically either a one-hour course, or we do have a half-a-day to a single-day course, like example, we have, uh, we have uh, the, right, so we have the introduction to 5G, we have uh, the, 5G uh, services network architecture, giving you the end-to-end -end, uh, overview of 5G networks. This is a four-hour course. Uh, we have a 5G essentials, which is one day. And for those of you who are working on uh, advanced courses, so, so we do have, uh, for planning team, we do have a two days uh, 5G air interface course, and 5G RF planning and uh, uh, planning and design for those who are in radio uh, RAN performance. We do have uh, a basic course as uh, air interface, followed by uh, followed by the uh, workshop signaling and for signaling and uh, operations, both for the NSA and SA version. And also we do have for performance workshop, and we also have some have uh, 
uh, courses related to the container, container, containers and uh, uh, and uh, virtualization world. For, and also for those who are looking in for the 5G core networks, uh, uh, we do have a two-day course on uh, 5G, uh, 5G networks and services, a two-day course. And we also have uh, a, a blended learning version, uh, uh, a staggered course, basically four days, uh, four weeks, uh, four days over four weeks, uh, right? Uh, so we do have a course on 5G core networks and signaling, and we have yet another new course that is in the, again the blended format, uh, which is on uh, the voice solutions in uh, uh, 5G core, both uh, Vivo and NAR, similar to the Volti and uh, EPS fallback is covered extensively there. So for those of you who are working on automations and uh, right, so we do again have the foundation courses and also the intermediate courses. Please do log on to www.award solutions to, do, to know more about our offerings. Uh, uh, thank you. So now let's uh, start with our, uh, uh, right, with our discussions. Uh, that is a service-based uh, uh, service based architecture that is SVA in 5G. I hope all of you can hear me. If you are unable to hear me, you can send me on the chat, right? You can send me on the chat. Uh, uh, so please do feel free to ask any questions. Uh, in case if you have any questions, please do feel free. Uh, I would like to take the questions on the chat engine, okay? So uh, I look forward for your questions. Again, for those of you who uh, who joined uh, uh, who joined a little late and Manohara is uh, from Award Solutions uh, facilitating this uh, one hour program on uh, uh, service based architecture uh, SBA in 5G. So now let's uh, move on with that. So it is about again our uh, some of our uh, uh, slides that we looked into. This is about our technology coverage that we have. We are, uh, we are into 5G virtualization, artificial intelligence. Uh, Right and also and both radio and core networks. So we do have courses, specialized courses on network slicing, NSCA, SCA kind of deployment. So I we already saw about this. That is uh, the our uh, partnership with the Mobile World Congress, and this is about our course offerings. Uh, what we do have, we have an instructor-led training there. Uh, we have an in-house uh, personal training uh, that, uh, conducted by instructor. We do have self-paced uh, uh, specific uh, self-paced uh, e-learning on uh, specific topics which are hot, uh, which are very hot. We do have a blended learning, which is uh, a, a combination of both uh, instructor-led and uh, uh, e-learning, which is staggered over the weeks, uh, which includes videos, uh, white papers, and also the discussion forums, uh, where you can discuss over the weeks. And uh, uh, one once in a week, uh, uh, we do go with advanced topics based on whatever you are learning will be. So it's a, a new format of uh, uh, learning, which is very popular in the industry. And we do have high quality video, and we have the podcast and also the webinars, uh, which is on the uh, latest hot topics uh, of the industry, okay? So uh, we keep uh, offering a newer webinars. Please do log on to www.award solutions to know more about uh, our uh, uh, courses. So, so this is about why blended learning. So it has got uh, very good, uh, uh, very good things, uh, right? So then about our uh, about this uh, webinar. Uh, so this is a web-based uh, training classroom. So thank you all for your cooperation for not recording this session. Uh, recording is uh, prohibited. Recording or photography of this session is uh, prohibited. Please keep your phones in uh, silent mode and right. And now let's start uh, with the objectives uh, of uh, this one hour uh, program. So we are going to look into the concept of uh, SVA, that is a service-based architecture. We are going to illustrate the use of SVA in the 5G core network. So the 5G core is the one where we are uh, implementing the service-based uh, architecture and we extensively used, uh, use uh, uh, service-based interfaces. So we are going to look into what they are and we look into two prominent network functions. 
One is the network uh, repository function, or network function repository function, which is a which is basically a registry to talk about all the network components or the, all the network functions that are uh, that are uh, available in the uh, available for communication. And then we have a NEF that is a, a network exposure function in the uh, SVA or service-based architectures. Where we are going to look into that. And then we look into the roles of uh, the 5G-based uh, uh, interfaces uh, in realizing the service-based architecture. So, what is the role of uh, role the service-based interfaces does? What is the advantage of using them? And finally, we right we we look into some of the characteristics uh, incorporated with the uh, SPA uh, with the SPA for the 5G code. Okay, so this is what uh, we are going to look out in this uh, one-hour program. So while I'm while we are discussing, in case if you have any questions, uh, please do feel free uh, to send even questions or queries. Or if you have any points, also please do make it. Uh, uh, you can send it on the chat uh, uh, chat engine. Okay. So now let's uh, look into the uh, right. So now let's look into the service-based architecture. As of now, when we migrated from 2G towards uh, the 4G, what we had was only a point-to-point -point communication based architecture where we have some standardized protocols. Uh, those could be, as an example, could be a GTP, that is GPRS terminal protocol, or it could be something like the uh, uh, S1 APs or the run app kind of uh, uh, protocols which were there which were which were uh, used for uh, communication purpose but now we are moving towards uh, the service based architecture which is already very familiar which is very much uh, popular in the computer uh, communications okay so now we are now my 5g is evolving the sba or service based architecture so what is this service based architecture at a, from a very high point uh, from a very high level is what we are looking at now so the service based architecture is basically a forum where the network functionality is achieved through the interactions between the network functions earlier we used to call it as network nodes but now the elementary the the basic unit of the device that will be communicating is now called as the network function so we do have network function and the network functions are going to request for a service the and the server is going to respond respond with with the service so we are basically looking at an interaction in the sense like consumer and producer kind of a communication is what we are looking at as an example we can we can see that as a mall okay so when you go into a shopping mall we are right so you are you are you are we are interested in purchasing some item some something for ourselves so how do we get to know about which shop we, we which where which shop uh, uh, these uh, articles of uh, uh, the uh, material that what we are looking for is available is basically what we look at okay so in that sense we bring in the terminology is basically we use a consumer and the producer all the network uh, function here the basic units is basically the network functionality which is called as a net there are many multiple network functions. Remember, in our case of LTE, we had network here, yeah, network nodes like MME, mobility management entity, the serving gateways, the HSS, the PDN gateways. Then we have the PCR, that is policy and charging function. So these were all the network nodes that were there, which were interacting with each other to provide a service to the end user. Similarly, here we now have the concept of network functions. So when we talk about the 5G core network, the 5G core network has got multiple network functions. Like example, it can be an AMF, access and mobility management function. It can be a SMF, that is session management function. It can be a UU. UDM that is unified data management. It can be a PCF that is policy uh, control function. It can be a UPF that is a, a user plane function, which is exact, which is exactly similar to the gateway. 
we do have the nrfs and the nef each of them can provide a service to the some to the consumer so one of the one of these nodes could be acting as a consumer so we now look at basically a communication between the consumer and the producer to be very precise we are talking about network function consumer and network function producer okay so these two are these two are request the consumer is requesting the service and the producer is providing the kind of service in this way the network functionality is achieved now how do who assists the network uh, network consumers to find out the exact producer who can provide the kind of service that uh, uh, that the subscribers uh, the in this case the consumer is looking for is that we have a broker so in the 5g network at a very high level we have three different components the first component is the consumer the second who who is requesting for a service this could be as simple as uh, as simple as an authentication as a service or registration as a service or it could be subscription as a service or it could be the establishing a session could be one of the service okay so so depending upon different procedures different yeah, different network functions will take the role of a consumer similarly for the for those particular uh, procedures for those procedures we do have certain network functions which which takes the role of a producer like example for some role for, for some function the smf that is uh, the session management function could be a consumer like example when you are when you are requesting for a policy and charging right for a policy and charging when we look into the pcc part the smf will become a consumer but when you go for the session establishment the smf itself is going to be a producer because in that case the amf is which is similar to the mme is going to be the consumer now who may who match who makes the ma matching between the consumer and the producer is a broker so the broker is a uh, is basically another network function which helps the consumer in discovering the producer so that the so that uh, the consumer can request the services from the producer so this is what is the concept that we have basically in the case of spa that is a service based architecture we have the consumer and we have the producer who provides the service and in between these two there may be a broker okay so there may be a broker who comes who steps in before before the communication happens to for to help the consumer find the producer okay so now at this point of time so basically what is the kind of uh, the 5g uh, service based architecture framework so when you look at from the 5g core network the service framework we have we have a component which is the consumer we have a component which is the producer and in between we do have a broker that is what we call it as the n on f that is network function repository function so this is the registry which keeps about all the information about the network functions that are available including their profiles in the sense that how do you reach to that particular node what are the services that are provided so you have the list of all the services and you also do have to about what is the kind of capacity that this node serves what is the present load that is that all those informations are available which enable the consumer to make a query or request for the services with the producer so how does so the framework consists of these three major part of course there is one more which is called as the scp that is a service communication proxy Uh, which is defined in the 3gpp but this may not always be required in a small network you may not have to require a pc scp but uh, in a larger network uh, you are going to look into the uh, component called the scp scp that is a uh, uh, right a service uh, communication proxy is going to be yet another node but 
attempt, but when we want to look at uh, the SBA in a very simple sense, the three components of the service-based architecture or, or the framework will be the consumer, that is network function consumer, the network function producer, and there is an NRF. Now, because we are looking at in the 5G, the virtualization background, the 5G core network is going to be hosted on a cloud or a data center. So the, the network functions could be instantiated, right? Well, instantiated and they can also be deleted based on the requirement of uh, uh, the uh, services, okay? So in that sense, right? So the first step, the first step of the service framework is always the registration. So registration is the first step where any network which is instantiated is going to, right, is going to provide the information about the services that it can support, what is the capacity, what is the load, all this information is provided in the form of a network function profile or what we call it as NF profile is what we call in the 3GPP terminology. So a network function will always register itself. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Have, I'm recording this session and uh, you are going to get the access to the record. Okay, so, uh, so when we do the registration, so when we do the uh, registration, okay, so, uh, so it is registering with the network profile, talk, uh, telling about what is the network function type means, what is the network function. Second, it is talking about the profile, which talks about what are the services that it can support. And very importantly, it will also talk about the endpoints. That is, how do you reach to that particular network function? Or how can you reach that network function maybe with an IP address? also is provided right so every network function would have registered itself so that is the first function right so network registration is going to be the first function that we are going to look in this network service framework second function is like example take a situation where we are looking at the pdu session establishment We are looking at the PDU session establishment. Now, in that case, the, U, the UE has requested for a PDU session to be established. This is very similar to the EPS bearer, EPS bearer establishment where you send the PDN connectivity request. So here it is going to be the PDU session establishment request message coming from the UE to the AML. So that is the situation we would have to consider. So when the UE requested the AMF for a session to be created or a PDU session to be very precise, the AMF now, now takes the role of a consumer. So AMF has to talk to a, a valid SMF. Please remember there may be multiple SMFs that are deployed in the network. Only few of them are able to, take, able to serve the UE, not all of them. Why? because there may be the network slicing concept and there may be the DLN concept, so very similar to the APNs. So in that case, my, my AMF wants to know who is the SMF who can serve, in, serve this particular UE. So in that case, it does the selection process. Now, once it has selected, it knows, okay, this is the, this is the particular set of SM, uh, SMF that I'm looking for. So, so now what it does is it does the discovery. So the, first, the second function is the discovery where the, where the consumer is talking to the broker who is the NRF say uh, requesting that hey, I am looking for the SMF. Now he cannot just say that only I want an SMF. He say the AMF will also suggest give some more information. I wanted to know, I wanted to connect a UE to this particular DNN. 
to this particular within the particular slice so can you give the information so the the producers that is in this case which is the smr would have already been registered okay so they would have already been registered and now the nrf would have kept the register intact it may give a single smr or a list of smr depending upon what the kind of deployment is okay so when you look at uh, when you look at the logs you can clearly see that the nrf in the case of discovery the nrf is sending a 200 okay it's not just giving only the only one smf it may be a list of smf in which case the consumer or the scp depending upon what the scenario is whether it is a direct communication or a indirect communication in that situation you see that the consumer or the scp may take a decision about Who, who should be the producer so in that way okay so the second step is basically discovering the producer so the first step was this uh, the registration that is every nf or network function has to be registered with a broker the second step is the network consumer is going to discover the producer and then there is a actual communication that is the service communication is going to happen that is service request is going to be sent from the amf to the smf right so there are various messages for that or the where there are various apis so right there are many multiple apis are there so apis are exchanged between the amf and the smf that will ultimately lead to the establishment of a pdu session for a ue so which will enable the ue to communicate to the outside world so this is what we see as part of the framework service framework where there are three major steps the first step is the network function registration the second step is the network function producer discovery by the network function consumer and the third step or the third procedure is basically the actual service request response going from the consumer to the producer so this is always going to happen right for every for every ue that is going to register a request for a pdu session then now how about how about uh, looking that in from the 5g core network perspective with the with the sba so in the core network in the core network the control part that is uh, uh, the control part that is the control plane functions are the ones who are going to support the sba or the service based architecture so you can see here the list of network functions the network uh, uh, slice selection function that is nssf nef that is network exposure function nrf repository function pcf is uh, analogous to the pcrf the udm which is like hss uh, uh, the af is the same like what we had in lte the smf is the one which does the session management function so this is uh, somewhat like uh, the mme session management plus the s gateway and the p gateway session management put together the amf is the asset id is the access and uh, mobility management function so each of them are going to support with their own services a very unique thing in 5g is that we have a AUSM, that is authentication server function a unique one without with the irrespective of the access you always have a single AUSM with the network right so the access could be either a lte or it could be a wifi or it could be a fixed line so in that case my 5g supports multiple access methods so you you must be always already aware about that so the service based interfaces are there and you also may have the reference point based interfaces where we have the n1 which is exactly like a nas right what we used to call in uh, 4G as a NAS is now uh, uh, the N1 interface. Then we have a N2 interface, uh, uh, which is very similar to the S1 in terms of uh, uh, S1 MME, to be very precise. It is similar to S1 MME in case of LTE. 
the n4 is basically a control the, the n4 is basically uh, a communication between the smf and the upf uh, uh, to uh, uh, to establish a pdu session between the ue and the upf so this is going to be the pdu session that is going to be established okay which will allow the ue to talk to outside world so the 5g supports both reference for reference point interface as well as the service based interface reference point interface here has got the uh, the application is to say that which two nodes can communicate to each other is what we have with the reference point when you look at from the control plane whereas uh, the service based interfaces are the ones uh, uh, which will actually define uh, what services are provided to which uh, uh, which uh, network uh, uh, function as consumers okay so that is what uh, we look at and uh, then we have two very important uh, functions uh, stand out very differently in case of 5g core network as compared to what we have in lte so in lte we did not have any uh, uh, any repository functions like which kept tab about uh, a valid network function what are the services and uh, how do you uh, how do you connect to them right so those information was not required in case of 4g because it was a point to point based uh, 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 architecture whereas now because it is a service based architecture we are now bringing in a specialized uh, function called as a nrf that is network uh, uh, network repository function so this is the one which will provide the information about the producer to the consumer because please remember in the case of virtualization that is when we when we are were talking about the the cloud right there may be more number of uh, network functions which are instantiated during the busy hour period and uh, in the lean periods you may delete some of the instances that were that are possible but in that case how do you know which network function to be uh, the particular consumer has to request for a service for so in that situation my nrf is the one which will expose the producer functions to the consumers not just that it will also provide the profile the network function profile in the sense that what is the network function how do you reach the network function and what are the various services that are provided by the network function which is what, how do we recognize that service to take an example of a udm so the udm services are basically n udm services one of the udm services could be basically the ue subscription data or subscription data management so that itself is seen as one of the services similarly for the smf you may have you again have a list of services for amf again you have a list of services okay but please remember that any network function which has to request a service to a producer should be an authorized network function right like example any function cannot talk to smf or any network function cannot request a service to the udm okay so they have to be authorized so how do i how do i know whether who is authorized or not is basically again those information is contained in the profile the profile talks about who, what are all the services it can provide based on that you know who are authorized to access that particular service okay so in that sense the nrf is going to play a very important role in case of 5g core network the other function that will be important is the exposure to the network function like example exposing the network events to the to the af like example whether the user is available or reachable right some of the external application functions that is third party application functions want to know whether the ue is reachable who knows the ue is reachable or not in the 5g core network the amf maintains the states state machines whether about the reachability 
So AFM has to provide the information that this UE is now reachable. So, so somebody who want to expose these events to the external network on the external application function rather is the NEF. Not only that, sometimes you may also want to look from the subscription point. Basically, what is the what is the QoS and what is the charging? So that is also possible when a, when an external AMF wants to talk to the UDM, which is HSS like here. Again, my NEF comes into picture where my NEF exposes, securely exposes those information to the external application functions. Of course, uh, security is uh, very paramount in case of uh, 5G. We'll see that uh, in the later part of uh, uh, our discussion, okay? So, so NRF to be in simple word, NRF is basically a matchmaker, whereas NEF is the one which will add value to the uh, VAS, okay, uh, VAS services. Now, how about communication? So we saw about that in the network service uh, uh, framework, now, right in the 5G case, so there is a service request, there is a service uh, uh, request and uh, response happening. So is that the only communication? Not really. So what you see is there are two types of communication that is possible between the network function to the network function or application function to the network function. The first one is basically the request response. This is what we see in case of network function to network function or there can be a situation where network function can subscribe of certain things, certain notification, like example, a policy change. My SMF can say, okay, please, uh, uh, please notify whenever the policy changes. So that is an example where you see that there is a subscription and then you can have a notification followed by an event. Any event that happens, please notify the SMF, okay? So, so the, in this case, we are showing the example of AMF and SMF. AMF is the consumer and SMF is the producer. So two types of communication is possible, first response and subscribe notify. Again, when you bring in the NEF kind of network or NEF kind of uh, communications or requirement, so you have multiple network functions who are basically the consumers, right? So you have the third party consumers which are basically the AF in this case. The AF is going to subscribe to the NEF like example, tell me about the UE reachability so that I can request some information or I can provide some service. So in that situation, the NEF is going to again in turn subscribe to the NF. In this case, it is going to be an example could be an AMF, okay, about the reachability of the UE. Whenever the UE is in a particular registration area, now the NF, the AMF in turn will will talk to the A will talk to the AF through the NEF. So that is what is the notify action that we see. Okay. So we can have either a request response kind of an activity or we can have a, a, a subscribe notify kind of uh, kind of communication also possible. So these are the two uh, two uh, types of communication that we see predominantly in 5G code. Now moving forward Look at uh, the SBI, that is a service-based interface. So all the while now we were looking at only a point-to-point -point based uh, uh, communication where it was basically a protocol based. So in this protocol based, the bandwidth was a major concern. The bandwidth usage was major concern. So what we do, what we did was we went with binary based uh, communication. To, to ensure that we are always looking with the bandwidth bandwidth utilization or low bandwidth utilization to be very precise. So this is what we did with. So an example for that is in LTE between a P gateway, which is also a PCEF, that is policy and charging enforcement function, talking to the PCRF, that is policy and charging routes function, is what we do, what we saw there. Whereas when we look in case of uh, a FIZ, a communication actually happens over the HTTP. So here we are using the HTTP2 protocol is the, uh, is the ubiquitous protocol that is used for 
communication over the http we have the application in the apis which is in the form of a json that is javascript object notation okay so it is an application which is sitting on over the http and typically here we are not we are we are not uh, uh, very very uh, particular about uh, the bandwidth constraint because we see that uh, uh, hardly it may consume uh, uh, a larger bandwidth right so uh, so what we do is here we are using the text based instead of the binary based right so uh, when you look at from the logs and things right so you see that basically the json is uh, uh, the right so all the uh, apis are basically in the json format so uh, right so it is all based in the text format so what is the benefit is one of the best one of the uh, simple benefits that we get is the kind of is in the development effort today development effort is uh, is very high because you have to know about the new protocol and then based on that new protocol you are defining the messages so that was taking rather long time but now all the messages are based on the http protocol so now what we do is we are defining the uh, we are defining the uh, objects right that is uh, what we call as uh, uh, the json applications which can be developed easily is what we see as the advantage now coming to the next part right is basically the right we are supporting something called as interface def definition language as an example the file, the 3gpp defines the yaml files ya ml files right yaml files is what uh, our 5g uh, defines so uh, so what we do is we are hiding the serialization right so we are not we are not going for uh, the serialization kind of data between the server and the client so we are going at a higher level so so we define a high level language that is called as idl so right and this reduces the product uh, development time effort per time effort how is that so we have on the client side application and uh, server side application these may be uh, these may be written in different uh, uh, different languages no pro no no issues so what we have will be we have a source file which will be downloaded in both the client and the server which will have which can be using certain using compilers you can uh, you can decode the uh, decode the ideal uh, data uh, right into the respective languages so in that case it, it will become very simple and also the development effort is going to be uh, less because the 3gpp itself is providing some of the ideal uh, scripts okay and uh, this is in case of uh, development phase in the case of deployment phase again this is very simple so whenever the service request has to happen so the compilers are going to come into place which will play the role of uh, serialization so that that uh, that pushes on the http over the tcp so not all the not all the part is uh, standardized in the form of idl but a certain amount of uh, things which can reduce the effort of uh, uh, development and deployment is certainly happening in the industry okay so now quickly let us look at uh, the general functionalities of the sba that uh, we see that uh, the sba basically uh, is all about uh, service based architecture is all about uh, deploying a network using the cloud uh, on the cloud platform so in that case when we are talking about the cloud so we are not only exploiting the benefit the features of cloud we are also we are trying to exploit the additional features of uh, uh, the http and uh, the uh, the underlying tcp uh, connections okay so the first the first thing is uh, when we are talking about the cloud platform when we talk about a network function can we separate the process and the storage for the Uh, what we call it as the compute and storage uh, separation within the network function like example you can take a function as amf so this network function is defined into the compute which is basically a front end 
okay so it is basically a front end and we have in the back we have a secured database which is the back end okay which is also called the storage like example you is store you e context okay now what is the advantage of that is the scaling of the network will become very simple and also it provides a very good pro, uh, kind of flexibility for for the uh, process okay so in that sense when we do when we divide the compute and the compute and the storage is divided the network functions will become static okay like example when we talk about amf or smf kind of a function it becomes stateless and there are multiple benefits because of the stateless uh, uh, feature one one feature is that you can you can envisage one amf for one ue that is possible okay that's possible because what we see a amf is actually a front end one which is only the process so it just it just caters to the requirement and then and then you can and then you can delete it right so that kind of that kind of a that kind of a feature is what we look at so that's the first feature that we see is uh, the stateless the support for uh, stateless functions and looking from the http and the tcp point we do have a load control and overload control part right where we can take uh, where we can use uh, the congestion control uh, uh, features to to have uh, the right to have the load control features right uh, in the case in the, with the same load control feature overload control feature we can also use the sbi priority mechanism to see who has to be handled first okay so that is also possible and because we are using the sba we can use either a http proxy or we can have or we can have a scp that is a sega service communication proxy these two are possible within the plm to route to route the packet from the producer to the consumer if in case we talk about a roaming the 3gpp standards define a new entity called as scpp security edge protection proxy okay so so the scpp is the for is the last node of the plm network beyond which it is going to go into the ipx and maybe to the other other network in the in which case you call you call that as a home network okay so so the routing mechanism is very well defined so this is routed through the http proxies or the scps right so when you look into the indirect uh, uh, indirect communication we have the scp so this is analogous to your diameter agent or your stp that what we had in the estuel sictron networks okay so so it is analogous to stp or uh, diameter agent so so we have the routing mechanism possible we also have server initiated messages where, where you can where you can uh, uh, initiate some of the messages for the subscriber again taking into consideration the availability so you can you can have the event exposures that is also possible and a very important one is in the 5g the heart of 5g is going to be the security mechanism right one is that these network consumers like example these consumers should be authentic should be authenticated and authorized for a particular service so that is very important now any network function cannot access a particular service so in that case you have to have some kind of a survey security the the 5g standards of 3gpp supports go on to be very precise go out to dot go is looks like it is going to be mandatory it is it is being supported okay where you are going to check for the authorization of the consumer by using the tokens so there are going to be tokens which are going to define how long you can access for the service 
right? Because once the access period is over, the the uh, token has to be reinitiated. So you have to get a fresh token so that you can access the services. So so what two dot o mechanism is supported? Along with that, we also have something like uh, the JSON, right? The Java object uh, signing and encryption, which is also called as uh, JOS. Okay. So we have uh, the OAuth, uh, right? O A U T S. OAuth two dot O, and we also have the JOS, J O S E. So these are used uh, extensively to support uh, the security. Because security is going to be very important because we are now having right the in the 5G security is paramount. So in that sense, uh, when two network functions are talking to each other, they may talk over across the PLM and is also possible. So in which case you also bring in the SCPP and also the proxies because uh, you may not just have only one connection, but in between in the IPX you may have to go through. Multiple proxies. In that case, you may have we you may have an additional proxy, additional security in the form of a TLS or transport layer security between the two PLMs. That is also possible. And over the TLS, we have to authorize the we have to authenticate and authorize the network functions before the secure before the service uh, before the service communication actually. Happens okay, so that is what we see, and some of the deployment uh, considerations uh, for the 5G core network. So first and foremost is that it is a need of uh, SDN NFP framework because we all know that uh, 5G is going to be deployed using uh, uh, you know using cloud. It is it is deployed on the cloud platform, right? Or the the central database, a central data center kind of a, a deployment. So you so we use uh, the SDN and NFP. NFP basically for the network functions, both on the video side as well as on the core network side. So we we again go use the basics of the NFP that is a uh, compute storage and uh, uh, networking part. So right. So so we make use of that uh, NFP form for framework. And also, we use uh, uh, the SDN to to forward the packets in the in the in the uh, effective paths on both the backhaul as well as on the midhaul, right? At least in this stage, uh, we are talking about till the midhaul because we have uh, a G node we see you also sitting in the cloud. Okay, so in that kind in that format, we have we require the SDN and the NFP. And orchestration is also going to be required because uh, we now have multiple vari variable deploy variable elements. For, right, variables are there for deployment. So in that situation, we bring in the orchestrator, right, so that we can automate the uh, uh, establishment. Okay, so uh, so we are using the orchestrators, and very important for the routing mechanism, we use. Uh, the proxies proxies are used within the PLMN, or uh, and the SCPP is used across the PLMN. That is what we discussed so far. Along with that, in the case of release 16, we now see uh, pre predominantly a SCP being defined. So a SCP a SCP is similar to a diameter agent. What diameter agent was for diameter communication? A SCP is similar to the HTTP kind of communication, where SCP can take the role of uh, querying the NRF and finding out the details and just forwarding the message to the uh, sorry forwarding the service request to the producer instead of the consumer doing the discovery every time. Right? The consumer just pushes the packet to the SCP and the SCP can do the Query uh, the, the discovery process is possible. Again, we have multiple uh, uh, formats A, B, C, D. So in our, in our uh, 5G networks uh, and services courses, we actually go into some more details of that. And in the blended course, we go into much more details of uh, those uh, uh, mechanisms of uh, forwarding. Okay. So so towards uh, uh, so finally uh, we saw about. Uh, about the SVSBA, basically it is all about uh, organizing, right? 
the structure and streamlines interact uh, streamlining the interactions between the consumer and the producer of network functions okay network function services then we also saw about the 5g core networks employs sba so this is to enhance the usage of uh, 3gpp networks within and outside the trust domain because we saw security is also very uh, uh, very predominantly defined here the nrf uh, we saw about the use of nrf and we also saw the usage of uh, the nef in exposing uh, uh, the uh, events of uh, both uh, ue as well as uh, the uh, subscriptions for the application functions we saw about that the sbi basically employ em employs uh, uh, apis uh, for interaction so that also we saw about it the ideal what we talked about is basically the yaml file so this simplifies the development so those of you who are in development some amount of uh, development effort is going to be reduced because you are using the standard you can use uh, the standard yaml files for uh, uh, for the uh, certain services okay and the 5g right the 5g uh, services uh, so you can see that uh, redundant, uh, redundant phase safe operation is possible okay in the cloud you have load control is also there this uh, load control and distribution so this also we saw typically when multiple network functions are there uh, when they are registered they would have registered with the capacity and the load so the uh, the nrf the, in the deployment there can be uh, two types of things either in case of discovery the response to the discovery can happen with a particular producer or a set of producers along with their loading so that, that, so in that case you can see that uh, load control and distribution is also possible ease of routing we saw with proxy or the and the scps and then uh, the message prioritization is again possible taking exploiting the uh, features of http and the tcp the security mechanism we saw about that with the jos and uh, uh, oauth uh, 2.0 of course uh, the tls is also supported so they those provides the security mechanisms okay so this is all uh, what uh, i have uh, for uh, today so in, uh, in case if anybody has any questions uh, please do feel free to uh, uh, send your questions on the chat i'm available now and please do log on to www.awardsolutions.com to know about our uh, offerings okay so this is about our uh, 5g curriculum curriculum that uh, we do have so in case if you don't have any questions uh, then thank you all have a nice day